Hello everyone and welcome to this week's lecture where we're going to be discussing Latin as it can be found. So the reading for this week uh, gives us sort of a history of um, Latinx uh, uh, participation in Hollywood and representation in Hollywood films. And so we see the beginning of uh, Hollywood history from the era, era of silent films. Latinxes have had a long history of being portrayed stereotypically in films. Um, Latinx actors were essentialized where they often performed exotic others, whether they were Latino or any other kind of um, exotic other that the film was going to represent. They were often depicted as either bad guy greasers or bad girl harlots. Uh, the addition of sound after the silent area, era uh, to films made accents essential to depicting additional stereotype, stereotypical images like the Latin lover and Latina uh, Spitfire. And this um, image that you see here is an actual poster of a film where Lupe Vélez um, starred in that was called the Mexican Spitfire. So this image of the a Mexican woman as a spitfire was very popular during this time period. The reading then talks about, you know, how things shift started shifting from the 1950s into the 1960s. One of the uh, most impactful films during this time period was West Side Story, which was recently remade, which is the image that you see here. Um, but the original West Side Story um, began as a play in Broadway that was later remade in 1961 as a film. That was the first time that it appeared as a film. Uh, the story focused on a Romeo and Juliet type of romance between a Puerto Rican woman and a white man. <clears throat> now the play and the original film were um, highly acclaimed uh, by critics and audiences um, because of the remarkable musical performances and dance choreography that were never seen before. Um, in Broadway or in film. One of the uh, Puerto Rican actresses that was um, actually made famous by participating in the West Side Story film was Rita Moreno, <clears throat> who played Anita. However, the leading roles were performed by white actors in brownface. This film, though, did um, uh, achieve for her her first Academy Award. <clears throat> However, at the same time, West Side Story, <clears throat> excuse me, West Side Story created the stereotype of the knife-wielding Puerto Rican gang member. <clears throat> the reading also talks about a time period where uh, progressive films were uh, beginning to be created. One of these was uh, the film Salt of the Earth, which depicted a strike uh, that took place in New Mexico where the uh, workers were striking for better wages and working conditions. The court, uh, there was a court injunction, however, that prohibited minors from picketing. And so in order to continue the strike, the miners' wives took over the picket line. So the film depicts sort of this unique experience of the women, the wives of the workers being the ones that actually take over uh, the strike, take over the picket line <clears throat> in order to continue the strike. And it was one of the few successful strikes of the 1950s. The Salt of the Earth filmmakers, however, themselves experienced FBI harassment and were blacklisted for creating such a progressive film in the 1950s. <clears throat> the uh, rise of films actually made uh, by uh, uh, Chicano producers and actors and so on began with short documentary films in the 1970s. As they entered mainstream productions of the 1980s, they focused on themes of immigration and assimilation. And some of the examples the reading gave of uh, films like this during this time period were El Norte, which was a story of Guatemalan immigrants to the US, and El Super, which focused on Cuban exiles. <clears throat> Films in the 80s and 90s uh, also uh, benefited from this um, marketing idea that came out during this time period of it being the quote unquote Hispanic era, um, where uh, finally Hollywood um, producers were realizing that 
the Latino population was increasing. That was also sort of hitting the, the news headlines uh, during this time period of the increasing numbers of uh, Latinos in the US. And so um, Hollywood, among other uh, uh, folks in the business world, were starting to realize that the Latino population was a good consumer base to market to um, <clears throat> and to target. So it opened up uh, the opportunity for quote unquote Hispanic films to be created during this time period because Hollywood was finally seeing them as a viable audience. So <clears throat> this um, led to the examples of films that were discussed in the uh, article that include American Me, La Bamba and Selena. And sometimes, however, these were critiqued for incorporating negative representations of Chicanos. One of the actors that uh, significantly uh, benefited from this time period was Edward James Olmos, who you see here um, in this poster of the film American Me. He basically starred in the vast majority of the Hispanic films that came out during this time period. The article then uh, talks about the new wave of Latino-centered cinema from the 2000s, um, where on the one hand you have the mainstreaming roles of Latinx actors like uh, Jennifer Lopez, um, and you see representation in mainstream movies where their particular Latino identities are whitewashed into sort of generic Latinx <clears throat> actors or generic you know, people of color. Uh, uh, as a way for Hollywood to be able to sort of sell them and put them into mainstream movies. At the same time, you had other films that were created by Latino uh, uh, actors and producers that focused on specific issues like immigration and began to challenge the ideal of the American dream. Some of these examples that the reading talked about were Real Women Have Curves, which kind of uh, launched um, the the career of uh, America Ferreira and uh, raising Victor Vargas. So this ends the lecture for this week. I'm looking forward to your thoughts on Latino films and how uh, they represent uh, the experiences of Latinx in the U.S. Have a wonderful week.